I'm your Gemini friend. This video is going to be about North Node in Taurus and North Node in the second house. And before I get into the video, let's explain that a little bit more. If you have a combination of, say, your North Node is in Taurus, but it's in like the 10th house, or if you have North Node in a different sign, but in the second house, the way that you're going to interpret this is the sign is essentially the way the energy plays out, like as if it was personified or how that sign would act. The house is going to be the area of life that this is relevant for you. So there's going to be a lot of overlap between the two because everyone is so complex. Your chart will have a lot of things that are emphasized that are relevant to this Taurus or second house north node. However, you'll probably also have some things that seem to contradict the message of this particular soul journey path and your chart is yours it is very personal very specific and a really personalized picture of like your life and your way of interpreting these energies so if your north node is in taurus but an unrelated house or in the second house but not in taurus consider what parts of this are applicable to you and then combine it with that other energy and I will be making videos about all of the signs and houses. And I have a video in the description that goes a little more in depth into just what the North and South node are, but that's gonna be really emphasized while I go through the video. Anyway, and this one is an intense one, okay? Because when the North node is in Taurus, that means that your South node is in Scorpio. And South node in Scorpio means that essentially you came into life really familiar with darker energies, with Maybe something happened early on that caused you to be suspicious of people. This can indicate a lot of trauma, either in early life or in past lives. If you came into life feeling like you already had a lot of like built up issues, Scorpio South Node. Um, <laughs> but another thing that this axis Taurus and Scorpio is really closely related to is that Taurus is about possessions, material value. Value is the key word. Scorpio is all about that shared, vulnerable, intimate, like relying on another person and merging with them entirely. It's about shared assets. It's about um, being provided for in a way like inheritances or having a joint bank account. So what this means is that in this life, you're going in with the energy of being overly familiar with being provided for, with expecting to have you not be the only one that you're relying on. And that's a huge message in like this particular soul path is learning to rely on yourself. It's about being self-sufficient, being a self starter, hard worker, and managing your money. This this has a lot to do with money, with assets, with just material value. But going into that word value more, this is personal value. It's about personal integrity. And that's going to be the hugest thing that you can determine within your life is what is of value to you. Money is inherently valuable. So we can all consider money to be <laughs> something of value because it's useful. We need it to live to some degree. But when you spend previous lifetimes or are like really familiar with this energy of working really closely in conjunction with another person, with having shared assets and with having like a close relationship, this can indicate having in past lives, a really close relationship with people of power who were uh, providing for you or or through having a real familiarity with the concept of like risky spending and earning high risk, high reward financial ventures. That's what you want to avoid. You want to avoid that as much as you can in this lifetime, because risk when you have your North Node in Taurus or the second house energy risk is going to be something that doesn't tend to end up well. For example, what I mean by that is like, if you are given the opportunity to do something that's going to be like, okay, this might be a little cheat to earning more money faster. 
you would probably end up more on the debt side of things without the reward because life wants you to learn this really practical sense of managing your your assets when it comes to practicality like let's talk taurus taurus is an extremely sensual sign it's ruled by venus it's an earth sign and it is really closely associated with luxury with sensuality with experiencing just like earthly pleasures and in this lifetime you are encouraged to absolutely just lean into your sensuality lean into the five senses anything that you can do that emphasizes your senses is going to be a good thing like it can be simple things should actually be simpler in this lifetime and the thing is <laughs> with Scorpio south node is that simple is not not an energy that you're comfortable with because you came into life knowing that you can't trust people or situations you came into life knowing that there's a lot of depth you are familiar with the depth with the like underlying currents of things uh you can just sense people's intentions you could probably sense even like the way that certain things are going to go but in more of a suspicious way like whether you have a lot of scorpio energy in your chart aside from this you're still going to have a lot of scorpio traits and when it comes to suspicion and oh, revenge especially um these things we associate with scorpio you want to avoid those things those are not going to be good for you like you might have an attitude of if somebody wrongs me i'm going to wrong them back i'm going to get back to make it even to make sure that they pay too but it is really encouraged with your north node in taurus to let things go <laughs> i almost feel bad telling people with their south node in scorpio to let things go but that's actually a huge message with this particular placement is learning to just let bygones be bygones and not dwell on them a simple practical life is what you're looking for simple meaning say you have a choice between two partners you like them equally and you can see a future with both of them one of them is more of a person who really encourages like your wild side or maybe does risky things with money or really expects you to be financially jointed in a way and then the other person is somebody who might be less stimulating to your dangerous side but it's a practical stable relationship they have a stable job they're wanting to live like in one place with you create a home together and just focus on building a nice life together that's the one you want to choose i'll always go with your heart i'm not telling you to like go against your feelings for a person but just for example you want to choose the practical stable option when whenever you have the opportunity to choose something like that and it's going to be really important for you to pay attention to where your resources are going pay attention to your finances it's actually really really empowering in this lifetime to take complete control of your finances peace is a goal here think of earthy tourists just wanting to relax and luxuriate any opportunity to do that is going to be better over the crisis opportunity because being so familiar with depths and darkness and drama and suspicious people and understanding this sort of dangerous risk oriented mentality you might be drawn more to like extreme circumstances or to drama it might be uncomfortable for you to be comfortable and that is all the more reason to get comfortable with being comfortable because you deserve it because you've essentially spent lifetimes relying on other people your soul knows how to be supported and in this way there's a real thing with boundaries because scorpio ultimately wants no boundaries it wants to 
entirely merge with another person or a concept so that their power is like greater together but in this lifetime you you are your greatest power you're going to be the strongest when it's you and i'm not saying that you're going to be alone because the perk with this is that once you have determined your value what you are going to do to work towards it and then you've really gotten like a groove with that where you're starting to do the like slow and steady stable thing People are going to support you. People are going to see, oh, they are really going all in on this idea and they're doing a really good job. And that's where the support comes in. It's not that you're not meant to be supported. It's that you're meant to have a really stable foundation within yourself where you know that you ultimately are the number one person that you can rely on. This, this placement is about finding your own power and... It's, it's kind of funny like to think about how one of the ways of finding your power in life is through indulging in <laughs> senses, like getting a candle that you absolutely love and smelling this candle is going to be beneficial. I'm not even, but you've had hard times in the past. You, you, you get a break in this lifetime from extreme circumstances from drama like drama is going to be something that the more of it is in your life the harder things are going to get because what you're doing is you're leaning back into that scorpio south node energy you're becoming interested in other people's situations and uh i'm not using the word meddling but consider that meddling is something not to do um scorpio can have like tendencies to overreact to certain things to just take a really extreme stance so if there is something that is causing you to feel these really intense crisis like feelings what you need to do is in that situation figure out how to tie it all back to what it is that you value and i guess i haven't really gone over this values entirely so to be able to determine what it is that is of value to you, worth working for, you might need to do a lot of introspection because one thing that comes with coming into life with this energy of like kind of lacking boundaries and absorbing other people's thoughts, intentions, motivations, being so scorpionically in touch with what other people need, what that can do is as an infant, Whoever's raising you, their values are very likely to be imprinted upon you. Like you would just naturally take them on on some subconscious level because they are the people that you were relying on for support to continue to exist because babies can't support themselves. There is so much of this vulnerable infant energy when it comes to anything Scorpio or eighth house. It's so much about this push and pull between like wanting to be fully merged with somebody else and be acting together versus wanting to protect yourself and make sure that you're not vulnerable to anything. But one of the ways that we ensure our own survival is by at least shallowly adopting the traits of those people that we have to rely on. So when you're a child, you're just unconsciously believing the core beliefs that your parents have so what this can do is actually make you very sensitive to criticism because other people's opinions can seem really crucial it's like coming into life and immediately feeling like you need to be matching people's moods and values and their beliefs because you need to survive scorpio is so much about survival so Coming into life with this survival energy, that's why you're looking for peace. You're looking for a way to determine your own values and have that be unswayed by other people's opinions. That can be a really big challenge with this placement. And I just want to mention here, make sure that you are paid for your work. Don't overgive. Do not give with the expectation of receiving in return because... That's an energy that's overly familiar to you, expecting 
compensation or support through other energies, through other people or circumstances. So life isn't going to let you get out of that like this because your soul wanted to take on this lesson. Your soul was like, okay, I, I get this. I understand how to fully integrate my own energy with someone else's in order to have mutual support going on. You get that. Now it's all about you being the support system for yourself, which is why you are able to give things to yourself. You should be giving yourself stuff, um, treating yourself, but practically, because of course we're paying attention to finances. Really, the more you can pay attention to finances, the better. Like if you know exactly what is coming in and going out, spreadsheets, like this is a really good placement for being naturally really in tune with financial energies. So having a natural skill for managing money, whether you are interested in that or not, it is good for you to at least have a really clear idea of what is going on for you financially. But the thing with supporting yourself and being the person that you rely on the most is that what this does is it proves your own value to yourself. It's really important to find ways to prove to yourself that you have inherent value and that what you're working for is valuable because everyone's values are different. Like people are going to have completely contradictory values to you all the time. And it can be people that you care deeply about. The most important thing in this situation is to make sure that you're tuned in and know exactly what it is you're working for. That's like step number one is to make sure that what you're working for, why you're working, what it is that you're gaining, the situation that you're in where you're getting compensation is something that is a core value to you that you know you won't regret putting all of your effort into this because Taurus energy is so good at going all in and just putting all the effort because Taurus doesn't commit to something unless it's completely ready. Like it knows that this is it. This is what we're doing. So going all in and spending all of your energy on building something slowly, something with a really firm foundation. Of course, we can talk about the tortoise and the hare. That is a relevant little story with this. Um, for you, always be the tortoise. Always. Like, I know the story <laughs> is specifically about this lesson, but any situation where you're thinking like, okay, am I just trying to do a fast thing to get results faster? Like fast, don't worry about fast. Slow, the slower and the more stable that things are, the better everything is going to work out. You always really want to pay attention to your motivation behind things. If you're doing something out of fear, that's the wrong thing. If you're doing something out of love, especially self-love, that's the right thing for you. There is also like, okay, when it comes to treating yourself and sensuality, you might with this innate Taurus sense, not, not Taurus, innate Scorpio sense, have a tendency to do some emotional shopping because this familiarity with the idea of being supported can like <laughs> in the moment trick us into feeling like oh it's cool I'll, I'll be taken care of I'll find some way to just make sure that you're not spending beyond your means there are always ways to treat yourself at any price point <laughs> um so risks don't take financial <laughs> risks um if you do find that you compulsively spend, which I totally get, um, really tune in to see if there's something that you're needing emotionally um, and find a way that you can give it to yourself in a more Taurus manner. If you have a routine and you know what to expect, that's going to be really good. Um, if you can really make your life as like as predictable as possible, the thing is, is you're not a predictable person likely with all of this Scorpio energy, I would imagine that it's actually harder to find yourself in a calm place, in a comfortable situation where there's like nothing's going wrong. It's actually entirely peaceful. So long as you 
focus on creating a routine, creating stability, you're going to be balanced out. It's going to be a balance. You're not going to become boring. And when it comes to taking advice from other people, like I was saying before, you really want to be careful in making sure that what they're saying matches your values. And if it doesn't, to discard it entirely, because you want to focus on building a really strong opinion system within yourself. If you can get to the point where you are not allowing other people's judgments, values, opinions to sway you at all, then that's when it's healthy again for you to start taking opinions. Like, it doesn't mean to completely ignore what other people think and feel, but always make sure that you're coming about it from a place of your own core stability first. It's also a really good idea that once you have determined your values and what it is that you want to work towards, that you really form a clear plan of how you're going to get there. Don't overwhelm yourself with like tons of steps. Always focus on just the next step, completing the step you're on as well as you can. Just full workmanship, great skill, because this also does indicate like having a really good skill with building, but set up your plan and don't just go with the flow. Like don't just allow things to work out the way that they will. In this life, you don't want to do that. You don't want to rely too much even on the universe. For you, the universe wants you to be the one that is paving the path. You and your goals should be your top priority. Because the more you work on your goals, especially if no one is supporting you, that's just going to make you stronger. Um, I really want to make sure that there are people supporting you. But even if people aren't, even if you have absolutely no supporters, you are your top supporter. You have to rely on a really strong set of ideals that you create for yourself. And when it comes to relationships with other people, what you want to do is go about all of your relationships unsuspiciously. Don't even bother being suspicious of people. As much as you can possibly do, focus on just taking people at face value and having strong boundaries if they don't meet your standards um, for a relationship. As long as you have a clear set of personal values and a really strong ability to form boundaries, then you don't have to be so suspicious and concerned about other people's intentions. Because if you're going into the Scorpio energy and really allowing them to get in, that's where you're going to feel more insecure and like act out of fear. But if you have the strong boundaries to begin with, which should be your priority, even before like going into a relationship, make sure, maybe even write it down, what it is that you are looking for and what you will not put up with. And you have to stick to it. This is so much about sticking your ground because when you are establishing your values, when you're, especially if you are writing them down, when you're doing that, you are actively putting energy into focusing on that part of you. You're being very conscious and you're going to do a good job with it. But when you're in the moment and you're interacting with another person, their judgment, their opinion, that, that's all going to cloud the situation. So that's why it's really important to focus on grounding yourself within your own value system. Because there really can be a tendency to be swayed by other people, especially with that survival vulnerability thing that I was talking about before. So when it comes to relationships, you likely have this really strong desire to just completely combine your energy with someone else, like the deepest type of relationship you can possibly have. The thing is, is that uh, there's nothing wrong with this type of relationship. It's a good, I think it's always a good thing, no matter your energies, if you do find someone that you can fully trust to be able to do that. But with this placement, you really do need to focus on your own foundation before you get into that because it's likely that this desire to be close to somebody to be in that vulnerable intimate state can encourage you to get into relationships a lot quicker than you need to when it comes to relationships same thing as anything else in this lifetime you want to go slow and steady be practical about it don't be reactionary don't be reactionary don't be reactive don't be going about it with any like extreme intensity do your best to keep things as grounded as you possibly can because that will allow you to take things slowly 
and to really come to know the other person, come to know how you feel about them in any given situation. It's taking a slow approach. With this placement, you might have a tendency to not just rush into relationships, but to really rush into, not just rush into committed relationships or commitment, but to rush into sex or any form of intimacy. But this energy craves intimacy. It craves connection with other people. So be really careful that you are fully ready. Every part of you, not just your mind or the part of you that is saying certain things, like maybe you want to secure the relationship as quickly as possible. Do not give in to those thoughts. You need to be sure. Before you are intimate in any way with anybody, you need to be sure about it. Because the way that you give and what it is that you're looking for in a relationship not everybody has those same intentions and it's unlikely that most people would give to the level that you are and you want to make sure that your relationships are entirely mutual and that you are always in power you <laughs> it's funny power um let's talk about power struggles with Scorpio energy. When I say that you are in power, I mean that you are in your personal power, that both individuals are in their personal power. When it comes to Scorpio, um, power struggles are a big thing. This Pluto, Scorpio, transformative, introspective energy, it can really struggle when it comes to power, power imbalances. It's the influence of Pluto this idea of needing to make sure that you're not hurt, that you're not allowing someone else to have control over you. If you find that in your relationships you do have a theme of power struggles or control issues, this is a really big indicator that you're not valuing yourself the way that you should. You should never rely on a partner to validate you. You should never let another person tell you what you're worth. You need to be going into relationships fully knowing your worth and fully willing to state it. State your worth. And if somebody does something that goes against a personal value of yours, do not let it slide. But don't get revenge. Don't get vengeful. Um, focus on the most practical way that you can possibly handle the situation. If you can have a calm discussion between both parties and communicate the issue and reach a mutual agreement, that's going to be the best thing that you can do. Do not get into like playing games or sneaking and spying, like never do that stuff. It, be direct. Be as direct as you can possibly be. And never ever try to guess other people's values, other people's needs. Don't try to guess. Just let them tell you. You tell them clearly what your needs are and allow them to tell you what their needs are. You can ask, but never guess. Never act out of assuming that one way that you behave will cause a person to do something. Like, don't even get into that. It's too complicated. We need peace here. We're going for peace and practicality. In this life, you are meant to indulge in being on Earth. In this, like everything that Earth has to offer, being in a body. Taurus is an extremely sensual sign, so obviously sexuality is likely important to anyone with this energy. And Scorpio, this axis is, it's very intimate, very high potential for a lot of sexual energy. But Scorpio is going about it from the way of like interpersonal connection and really needing that depth, that connection. While Taurus is not selfishly, but by design, the sign is much more focused on the sensuality aspect of it, the, the feeling, the experience, and the way that the body biologically responds to <laughs> physical gratification. It, it's more about that. So that's not to say that let your intimacy be selfish, like I'm saying. Um, it's a sign of making sure that your intentions when going into anything intimate are to have the experience and to enjoy it rather than focusing on 
the way that that affects your relationship with the other person. This is kind of hard to explain because I'm making it sound. <laughs> um, but what I mean is never use intimacy for any reasons other than like mutual experience, enjoyment, love. Don't use it as a power thing. Don't use it as a tool for manipulation. Avoid that at all costs. And if someone is doing that to you, avoid that at all costs. Just make sure that it's about the feeling. It's about the experience. It's about being a human on earth and doing human things and enjoying yourself. And another thing with this placement is like, when it comes to a lack of boundaries, that can really be between two people because the Scorpio connection is about dissolving those boundaries entirely letting you, the two of you be one double strong unit um and in that way that would indicate that you have a, a strong familiarity with dissolving your boundaries around other people letting them into easily and when you do that since you're already so naturally attuned to other people's needs and desires and what they're trying to get out of things you are putting yourself in their energy your it, it just gets things all mixed up it it gets things complicated we don't want complicated you probably have a real skill with like identifying the darkness in other people um you might have a tendency to see people more like their shadow side that they might not even know that you can see but that's not something you should focus on because you likely have if someone you're close with you probably have some sort of psychic connection with them it's likely that when you allow somebody enough into your energy that you trust them or they're significant important to you you have a higher likelihood of developing like a real intuitive or psychic connection with them i know that it's not likely that you're always going to have everything that you need but that's why you need to prioritize making sure you have what you value the most, what you consider to be the things that are going to keep you the most comfortable, the most stable. Like for you, if you run out of that one thing that you really like to have around that makes you feel better, make sure you have it. You know, just like do little things for yourself that let you know you're provided for, you're safe, you're secure. Anything routine, regular, comfortable. If you are ever faced with two options, Maybe one is more exciting, um, more intense, more immediate. And then the other one is going to give you something more long term. It's not as not as dramatic. It's it, it might not stimulate your introspective senses, but it will make you feel better. And it it you know, it'll, it'll improve your mood or it will just choose the one that makes you more comfortable. Choose the one that when you face the situation, if you you can go about it like from a, a grounded, stable place, like you're provided for, you have you've, you've got your needs met, and that that's enough. That's enough. You don't need to get into the more dramatic stuff. That's it's just not helpful for you because you've done that. Like you've been there. You get it. And for those reasons. It might be extra appealing. You're like, no, I love that stuff. I, I want the drama. I want the intensity. But it's going to be more fulfilling for you on a soul level as well as in this lifetime, it's just going to work out better for you to choose the option that makes you feel more comfortable. This is another thing. Like when it comes to relationships, you might choose a partner who you see has issues that you feel like you know how to fix. Don't, don't do that. Find somebody whole and complete and be whole and complete yourself and have a nice stable relationship with them. Don't be attracted to danger and risk and somebody who's going to maybe psychologically stimulate you. They, they might be a really interesting partner to have, but your soul craves stability. It craves to feel like everything around it is peaceful. Everything's taken care of. Like we've got everything under control. We've got our plan. We're working on this step we know what the next step is and that's all we're concerned about because we know what we're working towards and we know that we can do it and we know that we don't need anybody else but if we do want somebody else we are a whole and complete person and we can find another whole and complete person and have a wonderful intimate relationship with them 
I've said a lot, haven't I? I think I should probably stop it. Um, so, yes, this placement can be a really intense one because it's already just coming at life with so much heavy energy. You might have experienced a lot of really heavy things growing up, but this is a chance to focus on having your needs met and enjoying yourself. You've gone through so many hard things, especially if you're considering like accumulated past life trauma. This life is for peace. It's for stability and just enjoyment. Like you deserve to have a crisis free, enjoyable life where you trust yourself entirely to be your main rock. You you don't need anybody else to be your rock. You are the rock. There's just a, a need for like a mutual understanding of your own values and then you respect other people's values. You allow them to be different and you always make sure that you're sticking to what is true to you. And through all of this, you should find a wonderful sense of worth because of your own effort, your own ability to completely take care of things. You You did it. And now that is going to be the thing that really helps you to feel complete in yourself. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't worry about justice or karma of other people. Wor worry about yourself. Getting involved in other people's energies is just not going to be the best thing for you because a lot of the time when we are trying to get information from other people, understand what their take is on the situation, we are subconsciously trying to figure out their values and where we stand with them, and then using that to determine our own worth, never do that. When you're having a conversation, when you're any sort of relationship, go into it knowing yourself and make sure you're not using other people for validation. Even if it's just their presence in your life, their existence in your life, like being there for everyone, frequently checking up on everyone just so they know that you're there, that can be a way of using outside opinions to determine your value. It's best to have relationships where you feel like other people don't desperately need you. You don't have to be there for them. It's not 100% crucial that you make sure that they always know that you're there for them. That is, in a way, insecurity in your own worth. So be careful not to place worth on what you are to other people that's 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 a core thing with this and last thing i want to mention is that your things should be your things really focus on possession and ownership when you know what is yours and have things be yours like just yours not shared not anybody else's yours Having things of value, whether they're actual material things or if they're like accomplishments, achievements, or goals that you've met, focus on those things that you have acquired and be proud of yourself for having gotten them. This is a life to be proud of yourself. And the best way to be someone that you can be proud of is by being yourself, exactly who you are, not what other people expect from you, not what other people think that you should be, not what you assume that other people think that you should be, but who you are, who you really are. Who you are is, <laughs> who you are is, you're, you're good. You're already good. You don't have to change anything. We're just looking to alter behaviors that aren't necessarily helping until we are flowing with purely authentic energy. That is, that's the goal here. Um, so that's what I have to say about North Node in Taurus or in the second house. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you relate. Let me know just any thoughts that you have on the topic. I'm super interested and I'm very curious to know your experiences in this area. Just any, any input feedback that you have. And if you want to see more videos, you can like and subscribe if you'd like to. I do offer personal readings. I'll have a link in the description. Thank you. I love you. Bye.